Well, he's our main man for most football matters. We welcome him back on to the program, Fred de Jong, a disciple of Eric Ten Hag. Welcome back. <laughs> yes, mate. Man, I told you, man, you'll t- he'll turn man you around. He's done a great Boy. job, mate. He's done a great job. I'll tell you what, job. I love the new he's signing. He's a bit shaky the first three games. Yes, he's, doing a, great yeah, he's job. doing a great job. And look, that big Dutch man, who it reminds me of a certain FDJ playing up front for many in New Zealand side and the All Whites, of course, mate. Hey, Fred, I mean, look, you can't unlock a defence. You've got 10 to 15 to go. Put somebody big on with the elbows, mate, who's going to cause havoc in the area. I love it. Yeah, it ain't pretty. It's um, and it's not uh, what the the purists would say nowadays is uh, the way to to play football. But if it's effective and you need it, as we saw with Holland against Argentina, yeah, yeah. Um, some some teams they don't because, because a lot of teams don't play like that. It's uh, you know it's a it's a surprise factor and it works. <laughs> Well, uh, you could say it wasn't pretty, but it was effective. And this is Al Huckley against Auckland City. A disappointing result, uh, although I suppose that, you know, when you, when, you, when you put everything on the ledger and say who Auckland City are, what they've got compared to this particular side, it was always going to be a real uphill struggle, wasn't it? Absolutely. And it always will be. Um, and, you know, uh, my old manager at uh, Fortuna Sita used to just say, well, just look at the budget, man, and that'll define where you finish in the league. Um, there or thereabouts. And uh, if you look at the budget of Al Ahly, it's, it's over $100 million. And New Zealand's is probably, and Auckland City's is probably one, if that. Um, and so, you know, the, the gap in ability was, was clear to see. You know, they're technically better, um, sharper, sharper on the ball. Um, and, you know, they, they have the ability just to play through, as we saw today. They, they can just play through teams. And they're they're one of the most successful you know, club sides in the world. You know they win a lot of things in Africa, um, and so they're they're good. They're a good good team. And uh, so you know it was always going to be a struggle for Auckland City. And on a, on a night like that, you need you need everyone you know, and especially your best players like Cam Howison, um, you know, to be really influential. Ryan De Vries, and I don't think they were. And I think um, and also you need your keeper to be superb and. I think he was left exposed by his defence a bit too much. And I'll luckily credit to them. Good team and deserved winners. Fred, you know, just listen to you say that, and you've got to, you know, remember people that Auckland City, I mean, they only can play who they play here in New Zealand. You always get better in any sport, any sports person, when you play above yourself and above your station and you play better opponents, don't you? And so, I mean, just even trying to get a build-up that was, that's effective is bloody hard. I suppose, though, you know, we did so well in Morocco last time. That's why I feel a little bit flat afterwards, because we got third place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, but I also think you look at the Auckland City team of that, which is 2014, um, you look at the Auckland City team there versus the Auckland City team now, and I think it's, you know, this, this, given the way the, the, the league structure is, operates now in, in New Zealand, you have this regional component now, the, the national league component is much shorter. Um, you know, just, just the way that that, 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 that works now. Um, you, you have to play under 20 players at, at the top level. That, I think, um, lowers the quality, has lowered the quality at the very high end of, uh, of football here in New Zealand. And this is the, the upshot of that, where a team like Auckland City, yes, they've strengthened because they've got Michael Den Heyer, they've got Reggie Marathi, who've come over from Auckland United. Um, so they've tried to bolster the squad, but these guys have just been added at the end and they haven't played through the whole time. Um, and also, you know, the, so, so when you look, compare those two squads from 2014 and now 2023, Tade was in that team, but he was a much younger, faster, sharper Tade. Um, Ryan DeFries, Exactly the same. Sharper scored the goal um, that put them into that uh, that uh, third place playoff. Um, so yeah, different players a number of years later, and um, and you can see see the result here. But um, yeah, take, I mean, luckily we're good. They were they, they were very good. I thought some of the touches that they showed, the attacking intent, the you know the the positivity to throw players forward. I thought was very good, and, and Auckland City just couldn't hang on to that. So what happens now? We get one more game, don't we? I say no, we. we. That's no, it. that's it. That's it. We're that's gone it. now. That's it. That's that, 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 that's it. Yeah, it's um, it's one of these quirks of the the Club World Cup, the, you know, where Oceania has always been just this add-on. This is actually a playoff game. This is not the Club World Cup. Right. Proper. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Uh, this has always been a playoff game to get into the Club World Cup proper, 
and uh, you know, and, and a few times Auckland City have, and Team Wellington have they've, they've jumped this hurdle, which has been massive and and an amazing feat. Um, but obviously this time we just couldn't couldn't crack it. Fred De Jong, knock knock. Who's there? John Herdman. <laughs> Oh, not today. Not today, people. I call it a, a premature publication from News Hub and a few other major media sites yesterday. I don't know how they jumped the gun on this because, you know, journalists don't normally act like that, Fred, unless they get pretty good intel. What's your feeling here? I mean, he left the football ferns to go and coach the Canadian men's side. He's coached them to the World Cup in Qatar, uh, and they were pretty impressive. I mean, they did pretty well there. What, I mean, as soon as I heard that number, I thought, hang on a second, you've got a 2026 men's football FIFA World Cup in your place, the States, and Mexico. Why would you jump to come to New Zealand? It did seem a bit of a long shot. Yeah. I, I I was exactly the same. The, the, the massive question is also salary, you know, salary expectation. Um, by all accounts, it's you know, he's on seven hundred thousand Canadian dollars. Not sure what that is to the New Zealand dollar, but um, probably closer to the US. Um, you know, so you're talking probably over eight hundred New Zealand, eight hundred thousand New Zealand dollars, and uh, you know, and he's coming to a job that's probably paying two fifty. You know, and so that's a massive drop in salary for one. Um, and also, as you say, the you know the the, the football that the Canadians um, will be gearing up for for a home World Cup. Um, and if you can, if you know you can stay in that gig for four more years and, and perform at a World Cup on your home soil, then um, yeah, that's I would have thought that's way way more attractive than coming back to New Zealand. But you never know why, you know. So. Um, so if, if, it, if it was John Herdman and suddenly he's out of the picture now because, um, because he has to, you know, he probably had to have a, because you know, Canada will be sitting there going, uh, what's the story, mate? Yeah, You're hearing yeah. all the stuff coming out of New Zealand. You know, what, are you committing to us or are you not? You know, and, um, and so now he's had to make, probably had to, had to come out, well, he has come out and said, I'm um, committed to Canada. So it'll be interesting to see if, if, he, if, if his name was the name um our post you know once once march goes by um that'll be that'll be fascinating to see because you know they've had some reasonable candidates they've got had des buckingham um know that he uh put his name forward um he's done some really good things coaching for the city group the manchester city group in uh in india um you know good coach did really well with the age group teams uh for new zealand and you know, um, through timing and whatever, he's had to com- recommit to the city group when he'd said already that he was, uh, you know, his, his first priority would have been the all Yeah, So Fred- he's a very, very good candidate. So you've got to have someone who's better than him. Yeah, well, Darren Baisley, Bays, of course, who was working with Danny Hay, taking over for the two friendlies against China. But as a former all-white and, you know, a man who's just put so much into New Zealand football, do you feel like we need, if it's not a Kiwi, it's got to be, to me, somebody who's actually ensconced here, who lives here, has lived here for a while and is committed to living in New Zealand. I don't want another Anthony Hudson, as as Fallon said, you know, pointy shoes and tight pants, who's using it as a stepping stone. Because this is, I mean, this is what we get dumped with all the time. You know, we want, and, and, and that's why I actually, as much as I thought it was confusing at the time, um, that Yitka's got six years with a football friends. I mean, that's probably a bit extreme in terms of the link. But I just want somebody that we know is going to be here and is not just looking over there the whole time, looking over your shoulder, going, oh, where's the other better job? Where's the other better job? Yeah, and I think um, it was it was encouraging when Andrew Pragnell came out and said, of the five candidates that we have, um, they all have a connection to New Zealand. Because um, I, I agree. I think uh, you know, if it isn't going to be a Kiwi, then you know you you certainly want someone who culturally is aligned with New Zealand knows knows the New Zealand landscape the football landscape because it is very different down here to a lot of other places given the lack of a professional league and um, you know we've we've got the Phoenix playing in another confederation um, you know we've got all these sort of nuances in in the game here if you're not a, a, across all that then coming in and trying to but I understand all that takes a bit of time and effort. And, um, and so, yeah, so it was encouraging that the, the five did have that. Uh, but, yeah, I think, uh, like I said before, if, uh, if you've let someone like Des Buckingham go, then the person who you've got in your back pocket has to be a step up on that. And that's, that's a pretty big step.